the pre-lab video for determination of the equilibrium constant of a chemical reaction from the general chemistry lab manual. So this lab will focus on the equilibrium constants and it will cover a number of objectives, how to use glassware. This is technically, this is a reaction. Uh, you're gonna be doing a lot of dilutions and concentrations and using Beer's Law. Uh, you're gonna collect the data, you're gonna have to graph some data um, and use this to be able to predict then um, some of the properties of this reaction. So people may be at various stages in uh, learning about equilibrium when they do this lab. And so the idea of equilibrium is that um, some reactions do not go completely to products. They will just stop, okay? And that's because the reverse reaction could also be occurring. And for many reactions, eventually the rates of these two reactions will um, end up being equal so that the uh, while the reaction is still taking place, there's no net change in the amount of molecules of either reactants or products. And when this happens, when there is this equalization of, of levels, um, of rates, this is called equilibrium. Now, this doesn't mean that there's a one-to-one -one ratio. Okay, so the, the ratio of the reactant. So here's the reaction we're going to be doing today. Uh, we take iron, an aqueous iron solution and an aqueous compound we call thiocyanate. And we mix that and it makes a complex ion. Now we'll talk about complex ions later. Um, all you have to know is that it's still ionic. It's not a stable compound, but it has this product. So we draw it like this um, and uh, it's red. Okay, and so, uh, so and, but the reverse reaction from I, the iron thiocyanate complex back to iron thiocyanate also happens. Eventually that reaches equilibrium. Now, like I said, it's not necessarily a one-to-one -one ratio. Sometimes it is. But that it is dictated by what we call the law of mass action, which is uh, the equation shown here, where you take the react concentration of the products over the concentration of the reactants raised to whatever stoichiometric number they have. And so uh, you can see then for the equilibrium constant below, for our reaction we have uh, you know concentration of iron thiocyanate, concentration of iron, and then the concentration of thiocyanate in the denominator. And so we're going to mix these things. We're going to do this reaction. We're going to try to use it to determine the equilibrium constant. So we're going to solve for K by using what we know are the concentrations of the other species. And we're going to measure that experimentally. So the way we're going to do this then is we're going to have different, we're going to have two solutions of iron nitrate. We're going to have a, a 0.002 molar and a 0.00 of iron nitrate, which will totally dissociate into nitric acid or uh, nit iron uh, ions. And we also have potassium thiocyanate, which will give us the thiocyanate anion. And so we're going to mix various um, ratios of this, okay? And then it's going to, so it's going to get different colors of red depending on how much iron thiocyanate was made, okay? Now to figure out how much was made, then we're also going to have a standard curve, okay? So um, we're going to do a different, uh, we'll have these pre-made for you. And there will be a number of different concentrations where we know the concentration of the iron thiocyanate complex. Okay, so if we're going to use Beer's law, like you should be familiar from uh, from earlier labs, um, we should be able to um, use uh, something where we know the concentration to do it. And so what I would suggest we do is uh, what we will do is we'll pre-make these, and the way we make them is that we're going to use the same uh, 0.002 molar thiocyanate solution but we're gonna use a much higher concentration of iron nitrate. And so what that will allow you to do is if, when you learn about this, Le Chatelier's principle is when you uh, add, when you have a system at equilibrium and you add a large amount of one material, the equilibrium will shift to sort of take the burden off. And so what this will do is it'll convert essentially all the SCN uh, to product. Okay, and so we'll see uh, uh, the, all the color will equal basically the concentration of the thiocyanate in there. So that'll be our standard curve. So then we'll get a line, we'll get an equation to dictate the concentration as it relates to absorbance. We can use that then for our initial readings with the, um, the one where we had the point, the ones that you're gonna be making yourself, and that'll allow us then to do the calculations. Now the calculations are the hard part of this. Okay, so there'll be a post-lab video that'll walk you through that calculation. Um, because we're using spectrophotometers, we don't have a huge number of them, so we're going to have to work in groups of four. Um, everybody should be involved in making the solutions. It's really not potentially a very long lab. The real key, again, is calculations. In terms of safety, um, the iron nitrate, we have to put it in nitric acid in order for the iron nitrate not to basically just turn to rust 
uh, while we're in there. And so you'll see that, uh, so you want to be cautious when you use that iron nitri or nitric acid is corrosive. The lab itself, there's not much to demonstrate. You can do these in test tubes. Uh, the amounts you have to add are in the lab manual, so make sure you get those to your lab notebook. And so you'll make these up, uh, and then we'll transfer them to cuvettes. Uh, we will use the spectrophotometers. We'll have instructions there, and it's pretty straightforward from there.